So, Nick, you're chief of staff mm -hmm. at school. Mm -hmm. You've been here for almost four years. Yeah, yeah, almost four years. And you guys have this unbelievable concept called your 10 regulars. Mm. Tell me more about that. Yeah, so 10 true regulars, first of all, it's not necessarily our concept. We didn't, we didn't invent it by any means. But um, it's like to make a really active community, you really only need about 10 true regulars, right, who come back and are really engaged and are very helpful in the community to make it feel really alive. Uh, and if you do that, um, you know, your community becomes really fun to be in and people are kind of attracted to it that way. How did you guys as a company go about finding your first 10 regulars? Because I think like it's kind of meta, but I feel like if we follow the blueprint that you guys did, it'll actually help us grow our own communities as well. Yeah, well, they kind of they, they kind of emerge naturally mm -hmm. um, and they tend to be attracted to like a great like passion or interest, right? So in our case, um, talking about the school, you know, 10 true regulars and power users, they were really interested in the product um, and they were really interested in building their business, you know, using our product. And so they kind of just came out of the woodwork and, and they were the ones who really were in the community a lot, asking questions, letting us know what, what they need, helping others, you know, that's a huge one is, is answering questions for, for a lot of other people. And um, we've seen this in other communities too, you know, like the, the, the leaders will emerge, right? They'll want to be helpful. They'll want to be on the leaderboards. They, they might want some sort of status if you, if you have that, so, yeah. It's interesting, like there's a lot of posts in the community right now where it's like, help, my community only has 10 people or 100 people or I can't get above 500 or whatever the metric mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because if you were to like, think about this from a physical real world perspective like if you have 10 people showing mm -hmm. up in the one spot every single day it's like basically unheard of on yeah. a voluntary basis <laughs> for the love of it and so it's interesting if you translate the digital into the physical you're actually like oh dude this is actually like really awesome yeah i think about that a lot and uh like you take some some mid-sized communities right like 100 members plus it's actually a lot of people yeah. you know you imagine 100 people in a room it's it's kind of a lot so um, actually, some of the best ones are not the gigantic 20,000 member communities. They're actually kind of the smaller, tighter ones. Um, that's uh, like in the in the couple hundreds are some of the most fun. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting because you guys as a, as a company have taken kind of like a slow and steady approach to growth. Yep. Yep. And from what I'm hearing you say even right now is like we as community creators would also be wise to take that pattern rather than like, I gotta get like a thousand people in this thing immediately. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I think people are pretty quick to rush to wanna hit the really big numbers and if that's what you aspire to, that's fine. Um, certainly if you can do it right away and you want to, uh, go for it. Um, but what we've really seen is that when you grow it really, we start small and grow it really organically over time. Um, and grow it. And, and if you're inviting people, you know, invite in batches, you know, invite your first, you know, 50 people, get them really engaged, get them inspired, and then invite the next hundred. Mm -hmm. That way, each each invite is building on the last one, right? Right. And you're starting to see people emerge. You're starting to see leaders. You're starting to see, you know, like, like really interesting stuff happen. Um, and that just continues building. And then at a certain point, you know, if, again, if you aspire to, you can start inviting more people and, and really growing a lot. But I'd, I'd encourage people to think a little bit longer term about this and um, and make your community like right from the start. Yeah. So it's real hard to go back um, and fix a community that's not <laughs> quite vibing, you know what I mean? Well, like bringing people in in like almost phases like mm -hmm. that is really, really interesting. Because if you even just think about like your, you know, your immediate network, yeah. like your friends, your family, totally people that you follow, you can only ask them to join uh -huh. really once. Like you only get one yeah. shot at like a, an opening, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and I, I tell, you know, if anyone takes one thing away from this, it's kind of that, it's like, and, and I talk to a lot of users about this um, who want to invite, you know, a lot of people all at once. Um, like you said, you kind of get one chance, um, <laughs> you know, other, and if you give, start hitting people multiple times, it's, it's kind of becomes a little spammy. So just be strategic about how you invite people and be patient. Um, you know, it's totally fine to start like a little bit smaller and then, and then grow it over time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting, again, how you guys as a company model this. 
because you guys spent, you know, well, Sam said he spent like six years building school yeah. to get to this point. Yeah. yeah. And then you decided to like throw an incredible party with one of the coolest party hosts on the planet, <laughs> Alex Hormozzi. And even then, you guys haven't gone like full one hundred percent pedal mm-hmm. to the metal to get as many people into the community in February as possible. It's like you guys are even like taking that as a phased approach. Yeah, yeah. I think, and I asked Sam about this early on when I started. Um, what's our growth strategy? What What are we going to do? You know, because it's a startup. I asked all the startup questions, and he said, "I think, I think, really, our goal is just to build a great product. Uh, we don't need to worry about any of the other stuff right now. I, th- I think that." When when it's time to grow and when it's time you know to to tackle those other problems, it'll be so distracting that it'll take our eyes off building a great product initially. So um, you know keep that in mind for communities too. It's like with growth comes a lot of problems, um, and and if you as long as you are focused on the beginning, making something great, and really focusing on that for a while, that's that's kind of the best way to go. How did you get into school? Well. My my background started a little bit in software. I was like in in the music industry at the time, um, and when I moved to LA at first, I worked for a small little audio company, and we did software and hardware. And I spent a little time in software and really liked it. Um, but the needs of the business changed, so I went into the hardware side and did a lot of supply chain and you know production line type of stuff. Um, and then I pivoted. I like did some aerospace for a while. Spent some time at SpaceX and, and a few others, not to name drop. Um, <laughs> but uh, I really, after years of doing that, found like the supply chain stuff. Although it was a great job, I learned a lot. Um, and operationally, I, I you know I learned a ton. Um, it wasn't for me at the end of the day. So I really wanted to get back to something more uh, creative and software driven, if possible. And um, I saw a a job posting for school online and. Bullet after bullet just sounded super duper cool, uh, and it was in El Segundo, and I love this city, and so I applied. And you know, I have kind of a non traditional background, so Sam called me a cu- couple weeks later. I got a call from Sam, and he asked me, you know, I see things like SpaceX on your resume. I see like all this operation stuff. Like, why did you apply to this job? <laughs> And so, but we had a really good conversation about you know software and why I liked it and how I'd like to get back into it and some of the things that I had done you know um, developing other products and we just really hit it off and um, I was I, I think at the time I was employee number four you know we were super duper small um, and we just all got along you know I met Sam I met Daniel I met Min at the time our, another engineer of ours and shortly after a designer joined us Lily um, but yeah we were a real tight small team there for for quite a while i mean it seems like built into the school dna is just this like creativity fun quirkiness and then just like performing at a really high level yeah yeah um well that's part of the reason i love working here is i you know i got it's it's a cool office where there's an appreciation for all kinds of art you know we treat software as kind of an art in itself but um you know we're big appreciators of music there's a grand piano i have a drum set out here i record bands on the weekends you know it's uh um, aside from the work and the building of the product and managing of the company, we ha- like to have a lot of fun, you know, outside of that as well. How have you balanced that like strong creative energy you have mm-hmm. with like the operational necessities of business? Because yeah. I think like a lot of us who have school communities, it's like we like we have this passion, we've got all this energy, but a lot of us are learning business for the first time, mm-hmm. and it's like it can be a little bit of a dance. You guys have definitely solved for a lot of those those obstacles. Yeah, we we treat a lot of it like art. You know, it's like um, it's software in a lot of ways is um, like you is is a lot of emergence. You know, like like when you're jamming with somebody, and you know, we ship features or we observe uh, how the users are are using it and what their feedback is, and adapt on that. Right, and it kind of changes constantly. So. There's a bit of a creative act there, just to figuring out and really digging deep into like what the true problems are and what mm. what people are really after. Um, but then operationally, you know, we we treat that in a art form as well. You know, like I think a lot of us here um, really enjoy that aspect, right? So there is a creative part of your brain, which is the design and the product, but 
um, a well-run operation is, is just as cool. You know what I mean? Anyone who's started or run a, runs a business knows like the joy when you, when you get it working really well. <laughs> um, and there's a good feeling on the team. There's a good feeling in the product and there's a good feeling, you know, just like how things are flowing when, when you have that all balanced. Yeah. I think like if we can dive into that concept of arc a little bit more, mm -hmm. Like for some people listening or watching to this, they're like, yeah, I get that. I totally resonate with that. That's just me. But like for some people who've just like stumbled across school, stumbled across the school games, they're like, I have a passion, but like, it doesn't feel like art. Mm -hmm. So like w when you say art, what do you actually mean? And how can we as creators like start thinking about our communities as a form of art? Yeah, uh, I think that art kind of is a lot of, like I said, like emergence, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at least in my experience, a lot of art is not like preconceived um, and it kind of is adapting and changing um, and it eventually makes its way, you know, onto a canvas or whatever. So in the same way, you know, think of your business and your community as kind of this living being, right? And you don't have to necessarily prescribe like, you know, a checklist to it. Um, you can use the community as kind of like a like a life source and get ideas or, or ask questions uh, or just see what, what problems are emerging or what people need help with, you know? Um, in that way, I think it's, it is quite of a, like you said, kind of an interesting dance, uh, you know, to play with your community. And, um, and then ultimately, like, what, what ends up being valuable for people, right? Why do they stay? Um, they probably stay because it's a great piece of art, and it's and it's awesome, you know. It's it's a bit of an abstraction, but we're here know. for it. <laughs> we're so, absolutely here for it. I don't know if it's one to one. <laughs> anybody listening, but you know, and that playfulness I think is really cool because, yeah, like, yeah. if we like stay on this art train for a while, uh, like a lot of the, the greatest artists of all time, they get to a level where it's like they're just playing. Yeah, you know, like this this amazing like artwork behind you. You start mm -hmm. off as like a blank. Yeah canvas mm -hmm. and like someone stood there and they just kind of like played around a little bit they like tinkered with it they did this or if you look at like i don't know if you saw like that beatles documentary yeah. recently yeah, oh, yeah they're just like they're yeah. just like jamming in the mm -hmm. studio and like they're just figuring stuff out and then something emerges yeah yeah and that's been a real mindset shift for me like getting inside the school community mm -hmm. of like start your community around your your niche around your passion and then just play with it don't be too prescriptive and see what happens. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's that's the best communities we see kind of do it that way, and and like we've mentioned a couple times, fun and 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 you know enjoying what you do. Like Sam in particular just loves to have fun in these communities. So you know if it's too businessy or if it's too prescriptive, like we said, it's it's a little less on the fun side. So you know have a nice balance. So as you're like kind of doing that dance, mm -hmm. how do you develop? A good taste to know what is working and what's not working. I mean, it, it tends to be pretty obvious uh, if you throw uh, an idea out there or you try something and it resonates. Um, it's it's pretty easy to tell, and particularly in a community, you know, like engagements is is a really great metric to do so. Um, we obviously have like the likes and the leaderboards and the point system, and um, that has been a great indicator of like if our if our taste or if our choices have paid off. Mm. Um, and on the other side, you know, in school community and, and some of our more customer facing things, it's they make it pretty obvious when we've made the wrong choice. <laughs> <laughs> when they don't enjoy the art we've made, they they're they're quick to tell us about it. So yeah, but I mean that's the the courageous act that you make. It's yeah. like here I made this thing. Do you like it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, totally. Thing. Whenever we ship a feature, there's always this kind of um, we 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 know it's going to be good, or at least we think. But there's always a bit of like, mm, you know, we'll see what happens. Sure. Um, hopefully, people like it, and we do as much work on the front end of that to make sure we've made the right choices. Um, you know, talking to power users and really getting the community involved in in the product and in the the building of said product and trying to figure out the roadmap, things like that. So we're, we're generally pretty certain, but there's always a little bit of like, hope they like it. You guys have experienced a lot of growth over the last few weeks. <laughs> With the start of the school games, everything has just got really, really exciting. Mm. How, do you, how do you manage growing pains? And what can that teach us for whenever our communities start to grow? Sure. Um, first of all, you know, we're very grateful for the growth. It's, it's really awesome, we're awesome to see. Um, and it's really just about identifying the problems and getting them down on paper, right? 
and problems can manifest themselves in a lot of different ways, but really just try and get down to the root of the problem, right? And um, try and come up with, <laughs> like if you can, come up with a minimum viable solution, right? Something quick, you know, relatively low scope at first, and then try out that solution, right? Um, and see what it does to your problem. Uh, if it totally eliminates it, you know, the minimum, minimum effort, that's awesome. Um, if you need to then ramp it up, that's totally cool to do that. Um, but yeah, that's that's how I would go. Just start with the problems. You'll know what they are. They'll be they'll be painful, <laughs> you know, and there'll be a, an undeniable like pain that you feel and that you have to do something about. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to speak a language that I know very little about. My mate's a programmer, and he kind of shared this metaphor that I think programmers use. It's like sometimes to get to A to B you just need a skateboard and okay. a lot of programmers always try to build a Ferrari <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I can like see how easy it is to fall into that trap where it's yeah. like there's this there's a, the, you know my community is asking for something it's like let me go into the lab and like Aww. cook up this massive thing where it's like no no yeah. actually like a little scooter would have been mm -hmm. fine do you know what I mean totally um, I think another thing you have to do is also ask your members like like why like, why do you, you know, if it's, if it's a problem in your community or they're asking for something or they're having a problem, it's like, okay, well, dig a few layers deeper, right? And really understand the why behind whether your, your members are having pain or whether you're having pain or something like, okay, why is this painful? Um, and oftentimes if you do that, you can get down to m a more elegant solution than if you just assume, you know, and try and fix things that are not actually the root of the problem. Um, and you know, on the on the technical side, our engineers are fantastic about the minimum viable you know thing that's gonna you know get us the eighty percent solution you know um, with with not minimal effort, but you know the the smart right amount of effort. Sure. Yeah. How are you thinking about as the platform really starts to scale over the next few weeks and months? Your team mm -hmm. will probably have to grow as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Like, who are you going to need and what are you looking for in those people? Totally. So um, we're always hiring engineering talent, you know, and we will be um, pretty much forever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, you know, and, and we'll have a new careers page up soon. You can see all the jobs. It'll be great. Um, that is, and there's a ton of different kind of disciplines we'll, we'll need for engineering. So, you know, there's like the product side, there's the infrastructure side, there's, you know, there's all kinds of things we can do. Um, as the platform grows, obviously more users is, uh, more needs for support, um, community support, technical support, um, and, and things like that. I, I see that side of the business as, as probably being the most need, uh, most needed in the near future. Uh, but we have plans for that. You know, we have really fantastic team in place, um, uh, both in leadership and the individual level who are very, very talented, high bandwidth, and we'll be looking for more of those people. I remember when the community feed was just like a bunch of postcards. When Sam first showed me the product, I was like, hmm. <laughs> this is, you know, in proper Sam fashion, it was very, very simple and, and almost like so simple I didn't believe it. I was like, Wow, this is the product, and people are using this. This is really interesting. But you dig under the hood, and it's you know it's a it's a quite a complicated product. There's a lot a lot to it, and um, to have seen it from back then, and grown it over the past like three and a half years roughly, and now where we're at with the school games is is just fantastic. And I'm glad that people are enjoying it and finding uh, finding their people on it. You know, I think one of our uh, you know one of our company mission statements is, you know, just help a billion people find their community and uh, and have a good time and, and meet one another, you know what I mean? So that's cool to see that starting to, to take off. Uh, where do you see the platform going? Uh, yeah, I think in the future it's, it's, it's about connecting people, right? And like one of the mission statements is uh, helping a billion people find community and find their people, right? Um, and connecting people. So I think that that's, that's really interesting. Um, where I see it going is just imagine when there's that many users on there and all these different niches and all these 
it's like a playground, man. You can go on there and search anything and find what you're looking for and join these really, um, you know, some are expensive, but some are quite reasonable communities and, and meet people and learn what you're trying to learn. Uh, it's fantastic, you know? I mean, it's, I think it's the most cost-effective form of education oh, dude. on the internet right now. I know. I was <laughs> For any topic you can imagine. Uh-huh, uh-huh. My girlfriend and I needed some interior design advice like a few months ago, and I thought to myself, oh, there's probably a group on school. And, you know, sure enough, there's a couple <laughs> groups, and you could, you know, subscribe for 10 bucks a month, 20 bucks a month, and meet some people and get some advice. You know, that's super cool. Where can you do that? It's phenomenal, man. It yeah, really is. It's really cool. And all the creators of, you know, there's so much out there. Like, there's there's a lot of opportunity. And I, I encourage, you know, everybody to to try and try and do community. It's really fun. Awesome, Nick. Final question for someone who's been listening to this podcast, either this episode or a few episodes, they've kind of been on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. They're afraid to kind of take that first step and open their own community. Yeah. What sort of things would you say to them? Getting started is always the hardest part, right? Um, I'd say don't be afraid to use the community, like whether it's school games or school community or whatever, to to talk to some people and and figure it out, you know, figure out what, you know, the, the two most common things are like, what should my community be about, right? And then like, how do I how do I start it right? So starting at your niche, right, and really analyzing and being true to yourself and true to your passions, right. Um, think to yourself, what am I really interested in, and how can I, you know, find other people who are also interested in that? And then what's what are we trying to do together? That's the, that's kind of some very basic questions, you know. And the, the answer to that is can be difficult, but I think if you just um, look at your own life and your own patterns and then you talk to some other people and get some feedback on what your thoughts are it starts to become clear and that's that's always the hardest part about starting anything right whether it's a business or developing a software feature or that it's getting through that uncertain period and trying to put together you know like a firm vision of the future so you know what the plan is Mm -hmm. so just just keep trying that's it well i'm very very grateful that you guys push through the season and the period of uncertainty for us because it's it's definitely paid off. Yeah, it's you know, and we we have our cycles. You know, every design cycle is like mm, okay. You know, there's there's always a little uncertainty, but you you push on the world enough. You ask for enough feedback. You um, really dive in. You ask the whys, and uh, it becomes clear. So, yeah, awesome, Nick. Thanks for your time. Today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.